What uh, my paper shows is that actually the price income relationship in developing countries is, is, is negative. So that if we look at the overall sample uh, across countries, the price income relationship is not positive as we have so far thought, but it's actually j shaped And I'm able to show this result basically by doing non-parametric estimation that allows me to put very little structure on, uh, on the data. Whereas generally this has been done with linear estimation and this, you know, gave rise to the, to the standard uh, result of a positive price income relationship. And uh, this result basically suggests that uh, um, developing countries basically have a, a depreciation of their real exchange rate throughout their development path. And this is important because basically uh, what, it, uh, what it points out is that, you know, generally countries want to manage the exchange rate policy for, for, for many reasons. And what these results suggest is that for poor countries and for developing countries, okay, look, if you want to do exchange rate policy, be careful because there is already a sort of natural path to real exchange rate depreciation throughout your development process. And this is uh, why also this result might matter from a normative point of view. Um, I think and hope that uh, the result of my paper can lead the path to, to further research in, in, in three different dimensions. But first of all, from the positive side, there is the fact that uh, my result basically uncover a, a new empirical regularity. And uh, this is important because, you know, empirical regularities are rare birds in economics and they provide the benchmark for, for models, for theoretical models. So uh, maybe the fact that I stress a new empirical regularity may provide, you know, like, my extend further research in terms of, okay, which are the good models and which are the bad models that satisfy this new empirical regularity. Uh, on the second hand, there is, uh, on, on top of this positive fact that I highlight, which is the, the J-shape of the price income relationship, there is the fact that I point out that the explanation of, of, of this pattern is related to, to structural change and to structural transformation. And uh, this basically suggests that one of the determinants of real exchange rate in, in, in developing countries would be structural change. And, you know, uh, it, it would be important to, to, to extend research on, on this dimension as well and to understand better how structural change can actually impact uh, real exchange rate patterns in, in poor countries. And this maybe can, can hopefully also like make us understand better how real exchange moves also at a higher income level because we start to look at sectoral dynamics and these kinds of things that perhaps have been neglected so far. And uh, the third pattern is that, uh, you know, the, is, is related basically to measurement of real exchange rate under valuation and real exchange rate over valuation. There is a lot of debate about whether a currency is overvalued or undervalued. For instance, Chinese currency is it overvalued or undervalued and by how much? The way people have so far estimated like this, this overvaluation and undervaluation is by, by referring to the standard balasa summerson effect, which is based on a positive price income relationship. Now, the fact that I stress out that the relationship is actually J-shaped questions also this kind of, of measurement of real exchange rate of undervaluation and overvaluation, and maybe might lead to further research on, on trying to measure better this, this currency overvaluation and undervaluation.